conservation is a cornerstone of museum standards and best practice. Some museums have very large and extensive conservation labs, and some are smaller scale, like here at Denison Museum. Knowing more about an object's composition can help with its conservation in a variety of ways. Um, knowing the materials, how it was made, what is present on the object, its chemical makeup, can allow us to intervene potentially in some degrading environment. A lot of times you have to have a scientific background in order to know how to care for an object or steward it effectively. My name is Hannah Ruhaus. I'm a biology major at Denison University and I'm a sophomore. This project with the museum is a very interesting type of interdisciplinary project in which we look at not only the museum artifacts and the materials that they're made out of, but also the microbes that might be present on them. Typically, our research projects, you know, come from history or anthropology and they want to know more about the cultural setting of the object. And this gave us an opportunity to apply some hard science. We're taking historical objects and objects that were used by people for hundreds of years and looking at them in kind of a new light. And when Moriana talked about doing a project with the museum looking for microbes on art, I thought, oh my gosh, that'd be great. I never thought about that. It was just something new for me. And then also be able to work with a student. And I was very fortunate that Hannah said she wanted to do this. There are different types of microorganisms. There are bacteria, uh, there are fungi, which include molds and yeast. So you actually need a microscope to see them. And you can actually find them in lots of different environments. We picked a variety of objects and we tried to really base it on materials, organic and inorganic. The ollas, which are pre-Columbian from Mexico, a metal teapot from China, a boar's mask, part of it wood, part of it actual bristles from animal hair. And we also picked a couple of pieces of papyrus from our collection. For our first sampling, we used a dry swab. And then we didn't get many microbes, and again, that surprised me. A lot of things didn't grow, and we kind of thought, oh, well, maybe they're too clean, or there aren't actually anything growing on these. And so that's when I asked Anna if we could wet the swab first, dip it into water, and then swab the artifact. And the idea is to pull more cells off of that material. When we did a wet sampling, we found a lot more and also, I think that after doing all the samples, I've realized there's definitely more bacteria and fungi growing in the more porous materials that are stored, such as the terracotta, and not necessarily the finished woods. Anna and I have talked about what we could do, where we could go with this project, and one thing that she said she's interested in doing is to characterize these bacteria more, to learn about what they are, what, what's the genus and species of these organisms. Right now we've just started isolating the different microbes that are present on the different artifacts and it could definitely be taken further. We can identify those colonies and those bacteria and see not only if they may affect the storage of these different artifacts, so they may degrade some of the materials, um, and also just if they had any potential contact with human or evidence of what they were used for that we may not have known before. I really enjoyed this project. It sort of took me out of my comfort zone a little bit, looking at artifacts, which I, again, never even thought about in terms of looking at the microbes on there, and so that was great. Uh, also, bridging science and art, I think, was a wonderful experience for me as well. This has really opened my eyes to the different types of work that biology can be used for. Not only is it very helpful in theoretical understandings of life, but also um, just in our understanding of what's around us. There's a lot of work that can be done, and we think that if more faculty and students um, are able to have this resource opened up in such a way where they can look at these objects critically, and from their educational um, perspective, whether it's biology or chemistry, art history, anthropology, um, even economics, it would be great. You know, we have money in our collection. So I think that allowing this resource to be opened up is a great sort of future for us.